o'clock. I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Roxanne, if you'll take roll. For those of you in the audience and at home, I have Carl Slaw on the phone, and that does officially give us a quorum tonight. Um, Roxanne? Got it. Uh, please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. There's Nancy. Um, has council had time to review the agenda? I make a motion that we amend item 10 to include a B executive session pertaining to business um, related to non-elected non personnel. There's a second on that motion. Second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded to amend the agenda to include item B, an exec another executive session, non-elected personnel. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed? Carl? Aye. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Make a motion to approve the agenda as made. Second. Uh, there's a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed? Carl? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Item, uh, public comments. Give me a second here. <laughs> Check that. Uh, persons wishing to address the city council regarding items on the agenda may do so as that agenda item is called. Persons who wish to address the city council regarding items not on the agenda that are under the jurisdiction of the city council may do so when called upon by the mayor. Comments on personnel matters, matters pending in the courts, or with outside tribunals are not permitted. Speakers are limited to three minutes. Any presentation is for information purposes only. No action will be taken. Uh, do we have any public comments? Donna? Now you don't well, get to make up all the lost time from when, when you wasn't able to. So I get three minutes for... No, just three minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I just want to update you.
by light. The outliers. <laughs> Blind, yeah. Kind of meant to be on that. There is a uh, difference in the uh, price concession that I, I believe uh, uh, that Twins gets locally uh, for these government vehicles versus a state contract holder because they're dealing in volume. Um, so that, that does make up a, a percentage in there on that, which truly does give an unfair advantage uh, to an individual that's dealing in volume. Right. It, certainly. Thank you. Um, all right. Motion passes. Item C. Mopac. All right. Mayor and Council, uh, late last year, former city administrator Sid Fleming and myself met with Thrive regarding uh, applying for a couple grants to uh, assist in extending the pra or the Mop Missouri Pacific Rail Trail from uh, its current ending point at the uh, at Colburn Park or the tennis courts at the high school over to the uh, elementary new elementary school site. Uh, that also included extending it on down basically to the east city limits over by uh, Super 8 in that area. Uh, at that point, we weren't quite ready to apply for grants yet. The deadline was too close. Uh, in visiting with, uh, with Thrive representatives, we decided to hold off. So the deadline now for the new grant cycle is July 1st. Is that right? It is July 1st? Uh, for these two grants. And uh, I guess at this point, staff is just looking for uh, authorization to apply for the grants and general consensus that the project, you know, if we're funded, we can, we can move forward with it. Uh, I can tell you that a portion of that internally, the school district's actually building on site uh, for it will run from Kansas Drive back to Kentucky, so that's a good percentage of the of the project that will have a concrete trail. What uh, Lissa and I have been talking about would be a limestone crushed screenings type trail, like what you see on the south wind, or what we've done to repair the pieces of the asphalt to the north end of town. Um, and our hope is is that we could keep those costs down, that the grants will cover virtually the entirety of the project, and. Uh, be able to maybe partner with the county as well as internally with our street crews to to build a very good majority of this project uh, at a lower cost. You got cost. an idea of the cost? Uh, I think I brought that. And, and this, guys, this cost that Dan put together for me back in February was for concrete with handicap ramps, so I don't think this cost is going to be accurate, but the rough estimate we had back there was 112000 for that. And do you guys want to speak as far as how much the grant Jessica. was, yeah. Jessica? So the two grants that we're looking at, uh, one is through Sunflower Foundation, and it's going to be for $50,000. We'll be able to leverage that grant for a department, uh, or a, yeah, a Department of Wildlife and Parks, for an additional 250000 for a grand total of 300000 Yeah, so keep in mind that the total I gave you doesn't include any engineering cost in it. Uh, it also doesn't include the potential of a couple, maybe one or two pedestrian type bridges similar to what we put in South Elm Creek Park to get over the, the little waterways. Uh, that it would be nice to install one to two of those somewhere between where the elementary school's at and out by the cinema just because of the residential traffic going to jump start and those type of things I think it would be beneficial uh, so well, there's only one way from between Kentucky and Eisenhower is right. Kansas Drive there and we would look at something I mean when we get farther into this we'd look at some other alternatives to tie in more of that residential but this this has the potential of tying basically the whole trail system residential commercial from east to west side of town north to south uh, I think it's a probably a nice step in the in the right direction with our trail system, uh, and it will require very little property acquisition. But we already have the Benton Street Road right away. It's going to take some public engagement for us because it's not been a road in the past, and people have mowed and maintained that. But it does give us the ability to put that trail or a sidewalk down through it. Uh, so at, at this point, I think. Uh, you know, we would like just the, the approval to apply for the grants and the understanding that if we get awarded them, that the city would move forward with the project. I would make a motion to authorize staff to work with Thrive Allen County 
apply for potential grants to fund the Mopac trail extension. Second. There is a motion and a second to apply for the uh, authorized staff in Thrive Allen County to apply for grants for the Mopac trail extension. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Carl. I have a question before I vote. Uh, yep. Is there any preliminary engineering required before this to include with the grant? Uh, Carl, on, on this grant in particular, it's not a KDOT grant. If it was KDOT, we would have have a lot of engineering and it would jump through the similar the process that we did with the Safe Routes to School. Uh, wildlife and Parks is more relaxed in how that's done. I'm not, I, I don't believe there's a requirement for any engineering and they're shaking their head no. So no, no engineering requirement uh, on that, Carl. And we, we have spent some money here recently uh, I've got a little bit of the survey work left to do to set the monuments. Uh, we're just waiting some time for Dan to be able to coordinate that with the survey crew to concrete them in. Uh, that's kind of the first step in that process uh, to get it started. So, so my vote will be yay. Uh, I also would uh, like to recommend that staff prepare another phase for the I, I agree with you, Carl. I think that and I, we probably had those discussions. That's uh, something that I'd like to see a road project. I know Dan and I have talked about this before, extending that road up there and doing some curb and gutter that would extend a nice sidewalk on both sides of the street that would probably take care of the uh, concern there. But yes, that is in the future. Okay. Motion passes. Item. Roundtable, item nine, uh, roundtable nine, item I'm, I'm or, finished sorry, business. Cedarbrook. Yeah, yeah I'm finished, sorry. Business. Unfinished business, Cedarbrook lot request. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, at your previous, uh, actually at the May 11th meeting, uh, staff presented a letter of intent to from Tom Carlson of Point Royal Development to purchase lot 23 of Cedarbrook second edition uh, for $1,000, the council gave me direction to go back to them with a counter offer of 2500 uh, which they declined based on what they were going to use that site for. Uh, from our last meeting, I was asked to bring it back or see if they were still willing to give the $1,000 for the lot. I have spoken with them. They updated their letter of intent. And uh, staff is just seeking direction whether to either decline it or accept that offer so we can move forward. I would make a motion that we accept the offer from Tom, Tom Carlson in the amount of $1,000 for lot 23 of Cedarbrook Second Edition, AKA Four Chambers Drive, and authorize staff to sign the necessary documents. Second. second. There's a motion and a second to accept the offer. Um, all those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed? Carl. Okay. Okay. I'm abstaining. Do you have a. Usually on the abstention, you have to have a um, financial gain on this. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I vote nay. Okay. Um, motion passes. Um, usually, as a general rule with cities, unless you have a direct financial stake or a um, moral claim to it, um, ethical claim against something, uh, we don't tend to abstain. All right. Now jump in. Item 9, roundtable wage study. Uh, Mayor and Council, in your packet is a, a uh, long document that Carla spent a number of hours on and the staff did to uh, do a wage comparison with other cities our size. And uh, it's, it's the similar process to what we did with the electric uh, distribution a few months back. Uh, it's taken her a while to get it done. That's a big process. And uh, I'm not going to pretend I know the details of it, so I'm going to let Carla jump in and explain to you what we've got and present it. So as far as our method for this, like Corey mentioned, we use the same method with um, as we did for the electric distribution department. Um, the way we went about this, um, 
I did meet with uh, the majority of the departments. Um, they selected cities that had um, comparable departments or the cities were comparable in population. Um, so they selected the majority of the cities that are in this agenda item. Um, some of the cities I could not get information for. Um, so I had to piece cities together the best I could. Um, so the agenda item itself is broken down by department and by position as well. You'll see the current grade, current start, current maxed, and then the proposed for each. Um, I do have notes at the bottom. Um, of each department, uh, for example, power generation, we had discussed adding a chief operator position to encompass um, their certification through the KMU power generation program. Um, so as far as the figures on page four, we did add a 1% COLA so you'll see a 1% COLA with no change whatsoever, 1% COLA with the proposed, and then the difference between the proposed and no change. And keep in mind, there not everybody, the reason we did the COLA and the merit still included is because there are some people or some positions that aren't being adjusted at all. Sure. So, why, why are those positions, and I've got a list here, I sat down over the weekend, I mean, direct director, fire chief, police chief, code enforcement head, city clerk, are all not getting a, a bump, and then the street and alley, uh, park cemetery, the, the appreciate operator, maintenance, the ministry, uh, rec administrative assistant, Patrol officer, FF EMT, FF EMT paramedic, lieutenant EMT, AEMT, deputy chief EMT, AEMT, and EMS director are all staying at the same wages. Why is that? Well, Why the, is the, some getting bumped up and some is sure. not? The purpose of the wage study wasn't to ensure that each position got an increase. It was to to provide information if we're paying positions properly, not just to give pay increases. So the, sure. I've been told that five department heads have not had a raise in five years and they need to move up a step. Is that if, if, in here? if they're maxed out on the scale, they're probably only receiving cost of right. living they have, adjustments. They would have, would have got adjustments. It would have been, right. And that's just the nature of the system, regardless of what position you're in. But yeah, a lot of our department heads are long tenured, so yes, they would be likely be out of that step plan. That's a 12-step plan, correct? Yes, sir. So if a person was hired on, would they get one step per year? Or can you get more than one? No. No, just one step. So right. well, up to our this. policy does allow to give more than one step. It's not, I don't know that I can probably name on the top, on my one hand, that how many times we've went outside of a step or went beyond that. Well, somebody getting hired on in any position, it's going to take him 12 years to max to out. To max. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, or uh, he moves to a different uh, grill. You, know, you get cost of living. So the uh, scale. Unless the they are. Moving. Mark, unless they are promoted right. to, if they to move a different, to a different grade, sure. then they, they it, move laterally right. down to where they were at yeah. and continue on. Sure. So they get their it's COLA plus a step, and then once they've been here 10 years, they get a third increase. Their like, longevity. Right. Mm -hmm. So they could get up to three increases a year. So, but hold on. At the same time, I think we're on two different questions right. here, and one of them is about the pay scale which is our laterals down and over, and the other is about basically the ranges. And what we're talking here is about ranges right. of, yeah, of I mean, the this total. Was just to, this was just so we can see how we are. We, how we match up. It, to similar places, similar cities. Well, some places we're good. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, so those would not, those positions would not get adjusted. So why the questions haven't been answered. Why is my top list not moving up, and why is the bottom part of my list staying the same? 
Because those are in line with what others are paying. Right. They're at current. They're at current levels of comparable cities that we that the department heads or that group picked to compare to. So they meet the comparables. Right. Right. My question is, why are we even looking at this? Is this to retain employees? Is this so we have a better it, ability to hire more, you know, better employees? Bo both, actually. You know, that it, that is where it started, specifically with the electric department. We were losing employees left and right. And, and I'll um, say, and, if, you, if you look at the police department as well, they, they've they been out of line for years. And if, if we're talking about police in this day and age, it's getting harder and harder probably to recruit um, and retain officers in there. Um, and if you right. can go down the road to Chanute and make twice as much. And honestly, a pay, the wage study ought to be done probably every three years to make sure you're in line and it's being adjusted accordingly. Uh, I mean, it's been what, five, um, six years? Our last one was in 14 and implemented over a three year span. So, I mean, so it's, basically, it's just a check and balances to keep us in place. And obviously, it, we're not keeping up with some of the positions where they should be. The biggest problem I have is why it takes 12 years to get somebody up to their top. And they don't have to be. I mean, if they're no, an excellent employee. Still, 12 years, you get hired on, they, and they tell you, well, you're going to reach your max in, in 12 years. That's a long ways to go. Every place I've ever worked, you make you've reached your max within two sure. to three years. And and cities are different. Some of them may be five years, some may be 20 years. All, all cities are different. I can tell you this is very similar to what the school district does with the teachers based on their years of service and their college or their uh, degree or their s coursework, uh, at least the way my wife's salaries work. You know, I wish we had done these all together um, with the electric, but I think we sure. set that precedent. Um, you know, there is some there are some funds. Um, in the employee personnel fund that we had uh, set aside for insurance no, now that we're no longer self-insured. Is right. that correct? Right. Um, and I know that we were going to discuss what to do with those funds and we ultimately on our previous discussion said they should, you know, that fund was set up for the employees for their benefits and so I believe we can fund this for a while out of that fund. Right. And I guess my recommendation, guys, is not to try and do this immediately. I know that's how we handled the electric distribution, but my intent would be let's do this through the budget process. We'll likely transfer or utilize that employee benefits money to help get this offset uh, for this year. Next year, you know, we're going to have we might have to figure out another way, but uh, at least gets us it gets us through this budget cycle. Back to page four of this one percent cola between the uh, no change in the proposed if we do all these changes then this is what the difference is going to be right right yeah so right. we got to come up with a half a million dollars to make the change that difference yeah 449,254 dollars and 60 cents how much is coming out of the enterprise funds um, so we have to come is. up with a half a million dollars to make this change the enterprise funds. Uh, hundred and eight thousand three hundred and eighty three dollars thirty eight dollars total. That's four hundred and ten is out of the enterprise funds. Insurance thing, do we know? I don't have that. Last I checked, I think we had eight hundred. Eight hundred and. I was gonna say I asked you about it. <laughs> Our, our enterprise funds can generally probably fund this themselves in their departments. Is that generally water? Speaking? Water would be your toughest one, obviously. Okay. But the other funds, yeah, they could probably could probably absorb take care of that. Without a raise, do what? They could absorb it without a raise. I think so. In the electric, well, obviously, the electric, electric yeah. we did it. Uh, I think you know, waste water and gas, yeah. Eight hundred fifty-eight thousand seven hundred thirty. So, I mean, we could we could fund the raises or this wage adjustment today if we wanted to do it. Uh, that would know, leave three hundred thousand then out of that out of that fund. I like I said, I would recommend doing it at the first of the year. I mean, that's. Uh, Can I ask, folks? Okay, so if a person is at the top of their pay scale, what's to keep them in Iola? I don't. 
the longevity that's bonus. That's my question. Or, I mean, sorry. why would they stay? Because they still get two no. raises. They get their COLA plus sure. their longevity. Right. They, they, they get a longevity of... Uh, what is it, 250 after 10 years? Yeah, so at 10 years. So they've got to be here 10 years before they can get that. Then they get $250 and a $50 a year for each additional years of service after that. Uh, that, was, that was the theory behind the longevity back when we did the pay plan was what do we do with the employees that don't get it, don't have an incentive to get a raise? I mean. And, and theoretically, if we do this every five six, seven, eight, right. ten years, if those top ends become out of line with what is comparable, we would adjust those as well. Right. And the benefit package. Right. Speaking from myself. I was just concerned, you know, looking at the disparity among everything, and you know, I sat there and went through and I made this list up, and I was just wondering why, you know, some are not, and some are basically just staying at the same place they are. It basically mm -hmm. boils down to the job is worth what it's worth, that function, and based on the cities. The patrol officer is not. The patrol officer is basically staying, yeah. the, staying at the flat thing and not. Okay. Yeah, usually uh, police departments do have some sort of a entry level position, um, and that's why I noted on under the police department to add that secondary position like a patrol officer to you know, if we move forward with this we can also ask the departments to tighten their belts elsewhere um, remember we're not voting to approve this we're voting to say we're going to put it in the budget and have those discussions um, I, and I, it's going to be hard to do this much. Like you cannot, you're not going to cut ninety thousand dollars out of the police. Right. Um, but at the same time, the police are ninety thousand um, dollars out of line here, and they've been that way for for years. Um, they're they're kind of the lion's share there, and I I'd feel remiss if we didn't do something at this day and age to try to keep our police officers um, that we have here. Uh, you know, if you went to the protest or watched the protests, they really weren't about RPD. Um, for the most part, they were about larger justice issues. Um, and the police, you know, came out on a, sat on a Sunday, most of them standing in the heat, um, conducted themselves very well. In fact, most of the demonstrators sung the praises. I know the organizers actually um, sung the praises of our police department to me, um, saying that they were very glad they were there and that they worked well. And I think that goes to show the um, professionalism of our force. And that's, that's a third of this right here out of the general fund. And I, you know, for them, I think it's really important that we show, we show some support for them. Well, and I think, guys, honestly, go ahead, Carl. Carl. Yes, I support what you just said, Mayor, and I support this effort to include the recommendations into the our budget discussions this year. Okay, thank you, Carl. I, I think the biggest thing I want to reiterate is one position is not more important than the other to me. I, it doesn't matter to me if it's a trash sanitation guy picking up trash or if it's a police officer or electric distribution guy. To me, the job's worth X. We should be paying them appropriately, and we shouldn't single out any one department. We need to be fair to all of them, is, I, is my choice. I agree, which is why I, I support you know the, the package, and I think we should have done them all, all together with electric. Um, but we did set that precedent with electric. Right. And like I said, I don't think any of the employees are out to try and get it today. Uh, I, think, I think they'll be patient. I think if, if we can make it work in the budget, you know, I, I I don't know what else they can expect. Council, do we want to do we want to instruct staff to include these rec as a recommendation to try to put it in the budget? Mark. Yes. Nancy. Yeah. Kim. Yeah. Jane. Hi. Uh, yes. Nick. Yeah. And Carl said yes. Um, I mean, the reason why I say I guess is just I don't quite understand my uh, my question and everything that. You know why? I don't know. I I'm fine with it. Some of this is some of this is how do you eat an elephant, and it's one bite at a time. <laughs> um, right. And you know, for those that weren't out of line, you know, we'd like to do more. But at the same time, this is this is question A about what are other cities paying? 
what is a fair market wage there? How do we, in, how do not we only retain, but how do we attract um, good talent? And again, one bite at a time. One other thing, could you possibly check with the other cities and see what step programs they do have? Sure, I'm I have. I'm still up on yeah, I have, 12 years to get somebody to the top of the scale. Yeah, I, I actually have that long. information and I can put a summary together for you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you bet. Because I like to. Of we, course. I can yeah. just send that out when she gets it with the weekly report or something, guys, as far yeah, as that goes. Mm -hmm. Well, Corey, do you have sufficient yes, marching yeah, orders? That's fine. I understand where we're at. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Carl, for you the bet. work you've yeah. done on this. Okay. Very um, informative. Carl, we're about to go into executive session, so I am going to ask you to give your administrator report or your counselor council report, if you don't mind now. Yes, uh, I just want to give thanks and appreciation to staff for the work they're doing, especially Carl on this wage study and the proposals. Good luck to everybody. Thank you. Carl, we want to thank you for calling in. Thank um, you, Carl. We know you're kind of traveling around and that shows a lot of dedication to this position and we thank you and safe travels. Thank you. Item A, trade secrets. I move what are we, council. 15 minutes? I 10? Yeah, let's try 15. 15. 15. That would put us back out at uh, 722? No, uh, yes. I move that the city council recess into executive session for 15 minutes. Trade secret KSA 754319B4, the purpose of the executive confidential data relating to financial and operational affairs and shall include the mayor, council intern administrator, Thrive Allen County, Lessa Regeer. The met regular meeting should return in the chambers at 722. 23 now. 23. Second. Motion the second is made. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I will call us back into order. Uh, we have the amended item, item B, which is an executive session for non-elected personnel. Um, can I get a motion for 10 minutes? I move the council to recess an executive session for 10 minutes per to personnel matters of non-elected personnel. KS 754319B1. The purpose of the executive session is to discuss an individual's employ employee's employment and shall include the mayor's city council, intern city administrator, human resource office. The regular meeting should resume back in chambers at 735. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Okay. In session, and we are in line for counselor and administrator reports, if I'm correct there. Um, I believe so. Gene, why don't we start with you? Uh, stay cool, everybody. I know I got too hot, so all I got, I'll make my motion in a minute. Uh, I want to thank everybody. Um, Sunday turned out really, really well. It's nice to see people gather there together. Um, especially for things that make it as um, passionate. There's a lot of stuff going on in the country. And I was really proud to see Iola and stand together for issues that we're passionate about. This isn't a uh, sprint, it's a marathon, so stick with it. Um, again, I'll reiterate that that went over really well. Um, I want to thank the city staff. They work closely with city staff. Um, they work closely with Corey. They work closely with uh, Chief um, on both sides. And I know everyone was thankful it went off very well. The tone was great. Um, the, the issues were great. If you get a chance, listen to listen to the stories. Um, I want to thank all the city staff too that's been working overtime as we get into the summer, as it gets hot, uh, getting the pool ready, getting all of these things ready. A lot of communities are closing theirs down. I think it's a real testament to us as a community to, to say that we are opening up and it looks wonderful in there this week. Can I get a key? No. <laughs> uh, no, they're in burnout right now. <laughs> Just stay safe, stay hydrated. It is hot out. So then city employees, please, when you're out there working, stay hydrated. We're trying to. Well, it looks beautiful. Can't wait for it to open. 
Corey? Uh, yeah, just a few things. This week, today, Roxanne and I started meeting with department heads on their budgets. Uh, my hope is to get through all those this week, get the salaries now that we kind of got that direction there implemented in it, and uh, we'll start planning all those guys to be here on the June 22nd meeting uh, to just give a quick, I'm hoping to, you know, a 10 minute overview of their budget. Uh, we'll try to get that to you guys out the week prior so you can look at it and uh, have questions ready for them. And uh, the school facilities thing is moving forward pretty fast. It's uh, taken a lot of time between myself, Greg, and the utility guys. Uh, we're working on some estimates for facilities for the elementary school for extensions for gas and water and electric. Um, just a quick note on the Sims, the asset management. I visited with them the end of last week and we've got a demonstration set up for a, I won't call it an upgrade, but it's a switch to their other, the other platform that bought Sims out is cardiograph or cartograph, um, which I think will be more user friendly for us. Um, I mean, there's going to be some training cost in that, but I think it's a probably a viable solution to get moving forward with this. Uh, I'll know more after we have the staff review it next week, but uh, just a quick update on that. Next council meeting, like I said, budget is about all we're going to do. I'll have one thing for the site plan approval on the elementary school, and we'll try to keep that meeting pretty much budget only. Uh, the pool, just a quick update. We did fill it this week or end of last week, they're basically super chlorinating it right now to get it prepped. The, the lifeguards are going to training, I believe, this week into the first of next week. So our goal is to, hope to hopefully have that thing opened up June 29th or that week. Um, if things work out, maybe a little sooner, but uh, I'm shooting for the 29th of June of that week. So um, other than that, don't have anything else, guys. Second it. Motion is made and second to adjourn. All those in favor, uh, sure. voting sign. Opposed? Motion passes. No, I'm not sure who's running. Uh, Sherry's no, Sherry's not. Um, oh. 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 Oh.